Halftime in Tallahassee, and it's all Seminoles, 38 to nothing over the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest. Wake trying to regroup in the locker room, and as you heard Bobby Bowden say, he's going to tell his team just to keep playing hard. 38-0 their score. Florida State trying to go for a national championship this season. Let's take a look at our scoreboard and check out some other scores uh, from college football this afternoon. How about NC State at home today with a bowl bid possibly on the line, 21-10 over Virginia. Georgia Tech leads Duke in the first quarter, 14-3. Mississippi State and Alabama battling in the second quarter. The Crimson Tide behind by six. And number 12, Florida having all it can handle with the Gamecocks of South Carolina. That game tied 7-7 in the second quarter. Northwestern and Iowa are tied at seven. And Penn State trying to bounce back, leads Purdue 14-9. That game is at halftime. And again, it's 38 to nothing here. Florida State with a great offensive and defensive show in the first half. Now let's go back to our game announcers, Jack Corgan and Doc Walker. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Indeed, an offensive show. The best first half point-wise for Florida State here in 1997 with those 38 points. And let's quickly get into uh, all those highlights because there were plenty for the Seminoles. To set up the first touchdown, it's E.G. Green down near the goal line, and Khalid Abdullah did the rest. Yeah, they come in off of a turnover to fumble, and they make you pay for it. Florida State had great production out of Thad Busby in the first half. Just razor sharp. Here's a guy that was it really had very little pressure and hit all of the open receivers. I like to see Pearsall. Here's a big tight end, rumbling downfield, 250 pounds plus, and scores his 10th touchdown here at FSU. Tying a Florida State record into the second quarter, or late in the first quarter. Tony Bryan comes up with the interception out of his defensive end position to make it 28 to nothing. Back to Moore Busby. And then Busby, again, raises sharp ball right on the money. E.G. Green makes it look simple. Second touchdown catch of the afternoon for E.G. Green. The extra point, or the field goal, I should say, by Sebastian Janikowski made it 38 to nothing as we take a look at the Alltel first half stats and 317 total yards for Florida State Doc and then the big number of the three Wake Forest turnovers. And it kills them. They need to play a perfect game against Florida State. They didn't and they make you pay for it. That's, this football team is just lethal when they get into that fast gun offense. Well, it has been as fast and as effective as they've had all year. Florida State with the lead at intermission. Second half action after this word from your local ACC station. on America Online, the world's number one internet online service. Call this toll-free number now and get 50 free hours. So call now. For all the hard-hitting action and excitement of Florida State football, join the coach and Gene Deckerhoff Sunday for the Bobby Bowden Show. Well, this week, we'll look at highlights of this year's last home game as we take on the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest University. Burt Reynolds will have a great moment in Seminole football, plus a whole lot more. Join us Sunday at noon on WCTV Channel 6. Jefferson Pilot Sports, exclusive presentation of the ACC Game of the Week, is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By Alltel where computing and communications converge. Alltel, always more than you thought. By Mazda, experience cars and trucks built with a passion for the road. Mazda, 
and by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Mike Hogwood down on the sidelines now with Jim Caldwell. What did you tell him at halftime, Coach? Oh, the big thing is that we had to go back to fundamentals. We just basically aren't blocking and tackling very well. Obviously, it's a good team. It's got a lot of foot speed, and we're just too hesitant right now. Jack, up to you. Thanks very much, Mike. You can imagine what it was like in that Wake locker room at halftime. You want to try and, do as Doc said in the first half, regain your pride with a good performance, but it's quite a challenge against this Florida State team that came in number eight in the country in total offense and number two in the country in total defense. But you're going to play a lot of different players in the second half and guys who try to establish themselves for next year. This is your, this is your format. Three turnovers in the first half. One of them returned for a touchdown. Jim Caldwell, as Doc said, will try and work on things for next year in terms of the mental side of things with this second half of football. Sankey on the roll. Downfield, and Samari Roll has the coverage on Tabidi Davis, and we're going to get a penalty flag. Sankey trying to roll away from Andre Wadsworth, and he still got whacked. <laughs> well, they're going to try to run a waggle, try to secure the end. Here we get Jess, good one-on-one -on -one shot, good camera work here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, he's holding on a little bit. Samar, and he didn't need to. I mean, he, he was right with him, hip to hip. Fans didn't see much of it, but as Doc said, he took the right hand and put it right between the eight and the one on the front of Tabidi Davis's jersey and got called for the pass interference. That's the last time you'll see that number two. Yep. Deion Sanders started the tradition with the number two, and it was retired and will do so officially after Samari graduates. Six sacks in the first half and the nine completions for Ben Sankey as Herman Lewis is just able to get back to the line of scrimmage before Daryl Bush takes him down. Daryl doesn't mess around. And when, when he hits you, you go back to the huddle and you know I think that was Bush. Guy closes. Again, we talked about him as a remarkable student athlete, great in the classroom, great on the field has been able to overcome knee injuries in the past. He was the first sophomore to be nominated for the Butkus Award. Semi-finalist three seasons here at Florida State. Flags fly, the screen to Morgan Kane, trying to bounce away from Samari Roll and couldn't do so. But let's see what the infraction was. I guess big people may have been downfield. It'll just be interesting. Ronald Jerry and his crew have been busy. There were 11 penalties called in the first half. Offsides. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty. Let's go have second half. Second infraction of the second half against the Seminoles. They've now been penalized eight times for 79 yards in the ball game, as you see in that graphic. It'll give Bobby Bowden and his staff something to work on next week, you know, when you get into those meetings. Mickey and Chuck on the sidelines. Those guys angry. And they, 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 need, they need something to keep this group motivated. Second and five. They'll give it to Kane trying to get to the corner, and he does. Morgan Kane will have a first down at midfield. Dexter Jackson ran him out of bounds along with Troy Saunders, but they got around the corner as Joe Zelenka, the tight end, made a good block. Very nice block. It's hard to keep the edge when you're playing the Seminoles. And that play takes some time to develop. There you see Bush trying to run it down. Pittman blocked inside. The big number 85, Joe Zulinka, got it done at the point of attack. Let's see where he gets hurt. Into the pile up on the Wake sidelines. Kane goes out and Lewis comes back in. Sankey play action. Has time going downfield for Desmond Clark, and it's picked off by Samari Roll. Roll's second interception of the day. Samari with some running room before he's chopped down by Herman Lewis. 
at the 43-yard line of Florida State, a 30-yard return as Roll picks off his seventh of the season. This was easy pickings for Samari. See, he's the inside guy. You want to have that ball on the outside shoulder. Clark kind of stumbles at the end, doesn't have the confidence because of his bad left shoulder, and Samari sucks up another one. Then, like the rest of the Seminoles, shows you he knows what to do with the football. Seven interceptions tops in the ACC and among the nation's leaders for the senior out of Miami. Busby remains at quarterback. He needs 12 yards to pass Charlie Ward for the second best season mark. Venez Gooch back in at tailback. He catches the little pass for a five yard gain. Kelvin Moses on the hit. In the first half, Florida State ran the ball only five times. That 23 of 29, wow. Movement, but Wake able to get back as Kelvin Jones got realigned. They'll give it to Gooch on the running play, trying to get to the outside. Dustin Lyman is right there for no gain. The Wake Forest defense. I like Dustin Lyman, number 43, the sophomore out of the Denver area. Boulder, Colorado is going to be a good player. Been productive, man. When he's healthy, you always know and feel his presence. All right, third and five, Doc. If there's been a problem for Florida State, it's been third down, it believe it or not. Hey, we have something to get negative on. The only two for five. Can you believe it? And on the year, less than 40% coming into the game. Busby with time and overshoots Peter Warwick. And for the second time today, Florida State will have a three and out as they don't take advantage of the roll interception. And this is where Bobby Bob and his staff really have to earn the money because of the motivation factor. You got to keep these guys into this ball game. There's nothing more important than coming out at half and reestablishing yourself, no matter how what the score is. Now he talked with Mike Hogwood about the flat second half performance against NC State. Cottrell's punt. Solomon will grab it at the 20 without calling the fair catch and got it over the 20 to about the 22. A late flag comes in at the end of the play. 34 yard punt. Might have had an inadvertent face mask or an illegal block. That was impressive. Ronald Cherry will let us know what the penalty was. Have an illegal block in the back on the return team. That's a 10 yard penalty and a first down. That'll move it back inside the Wake 15 when we return to Tallahassee. Florida State doing nothing to hurt its national ranking. Here's the thing about that. Sometimes it's hard to know when it stops working for you and when you start working for it. Well, I found a way to make sure that doesn't happen. Nations Bank showed me how to take my credit cards, car loans, and using the equity in my home, combine them all into one loan with a lower interest rate. Smart, huh? I make one payment a month, and it's less than I was paying before. And that definitely works for me. This isn't just a car. It's a sign of how far you've come. So if it gets damaged, who do you want on your side? At Nationwide Insurance, we guarantee that your car will be fixed just the way it should be. Because we wouldn't have it any other way. Nationwide is on your side. Advance Auto Parts presents part number 42. Jesse from Quality Control. Jesse travels the country. He spans the globe in search of the best quality parts for your car. Factory visits. Alle Teile übertreffen die Spezifikationen des Herstellers. Wunderbar. Product inspections on over 250,000 different parts and accessories. Thank you. No problem. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Our nationwide insurance ACC Scholar Athlete of the Week is defensive back Stephen Phelan from the University of Virginia. Graduate student received his degree in history this past May with a GPA of nearly 3.7. Congratulations to Stephen Phelan, our nationwide Scholar Athlete of the Week. 
Been an easy afternoon for the Florida State fans. Their team has been in control from the beginning. They have stalled a little bit of late, but when you're up 38 to nothing, that's not a grave concern. At their own 12 on first down, they give it to the fullback. And the sledding is a little bit difficult for Chris McCoy. McCoy, the redshirt freshman playing fullback out of Winston-Salem, rental and high school right there in Winston-Salem. Interesting package, Doc, at 210 pounds, but only 5'7". I think it's the ideal size for a fullback. <laughs> He's a tough guy as, as a lead blocker. How do you get lower than him? Got a yard on the play. Sankey with a handoff to Herman Lewis, who was built along the same lines at 5'8 and 185 pounds. And he runs into Daryl Bush and Lamont Green. Well, Gaskell Clark and Satar, those inside guys up front, you're gnawing away against these great athletes, these pass rushers, and you just hope that you can get a crease. But see, they get off blocks so well. There's guys who have actually have blocked them, but they get off. You see Daryl Bush trying to top things off. Lamont Green, he was a defensive player of the year in high school out of Southridge High down in Miami on third and long. Sankey over the middle to Beattie Davis, trying to get the first down yardage, but an excellent open field tackle by Sam Coward will deny that from happening. Yeah, he, too, he made a mistake. To Beattie made a mistake going backwards. Man, when you catch that football against the Seminoles, you've got to go north, south, and in a hurry. See, right there, you got to hit the brakes and try to get around Sam Coward. Sam Cowart, one of the three finalists for the Butkus Award, said, I wanted to be the best, changed his number to number one, and he has played like a number one this year. Backed it up. Trip Moore averaged over 41 yards a punt in the first half, and this is a dandy. Warwick, back to his 32. Trying to find the wall, and it won't happen. Good coverage. Terrence Suber leading the way for the Wake Forest special team. 49-yard punt that time by Trip Moore. Junior will be back next year out of Columbia, South Carolina. This is not just a little bubble of hope for Wake Forest. Jim Caldwell's got a program in place now that he thinks is going to get better. As you look at the Florida State schedule, trying to run the string again, and they are five and a half quarters away from a second straight unbeaten regular season. Busby down the middle has his man E.G. Green. And there's the concern of the speed. DeLon Parrish never broke on that ball. He just froze. I mean, DeLon, if he breaks on this football, he either has an interception or it should have been a massive coll collision by Parrish. And here it is. A.C. Busby steps right up, throws the rope. But what we didn't get a chance to see was Parrish, who had a chance to break on the ball and didn't. DeLon, one of the better tacklers for Wake Forest, but you got to worry about what Warwick can do and E.G. Green. This time it's Pearsall. Melvin inside the five as he got beyond Dustin Lyman. <laughs> so in two plays, they go 57 yards downfield inside the Wake Five. The big fella's on a roll. And when you play this position, you get a chance to get passes that are over 14, 15 yards or more. Downfield, over the shoulder, great technique. I mean, what more can be said about Pearsall having a career day? 6'1", 255-pound, fifth-year senior. He's caught three balls today for 111 yards, including a school-tying 10th touchdown. First and goal, Abdullah back in the ball game. He gets the call, and Khalid gets it down to about the three. He scored the first Florida State touchdown of the afternoon. He had a good block, comes off the ball. I mean, he's a sludge hammer as a blocker. And as you mentioned early on, and, Coach, and Mike Hogwood, that he had, they had to rely on him a lot more because of the young offensive line, so he stayed in and blocked a lot. But it's really refreshing to see a guy be rewarded for being a, a good blocker. Look at those numbers, Jack. Those career, man, that's career. Well, and of course, you all would average like 37 yards a catch when you were there at UCLA, oh, of right? Course, of oh, course, all right. Yeah. Well, second and goal. <laughs> In practice. Little bounce to Pearsall. Couldn't quite make the one-handed grab. Doc, would you have caught that one? 
I'm on TV. Sure I would. Yes. <laughs> well, you just know all your UCLA fans are going to uh, lay out. Yeah. I mean, because you don't get that many opportunities, although Pearsall is almost about to get out of the tight ends club. He's catching too many passes, too many going his way. And he's capable of that, too. Boy, he'll hate that. This whole day when he watches this now is spoiled because he'll say, what a shoulda, coulda. Mark Rick trying to get him the school record, and he knows it, too. Chewing away on that mouthpiece saying, I had that Had one. it, had I it. I had it. Third and goal. Busby to the end zone. Peter Warwick, touchdown. Peter Warwick gets his eighth touchdown catch of the year, and Florida State ups the margin to 44. This is certainly not a lack of effort on Wake Forest's part. This is just great execution by some of the premier athletes in America. Janikowski's extra point is good. Peter Warwick gets the touchdown. Bad Busby tosses his fourth of the afternoon and his 24th of the season. Pepsi theft. It can happen anywhere, anytime. Fight back. Introducing the Pepsi Club. Now Pepsi moments don't have to become anxious moments. Excuse me. What you were about to see did not actually happen, but it could happen. They took everything! Look, Ma, the Pepsi Club works. Not today. Thank you, Pepsi Club. Pepsi, Generation Next. Available in six-pack. In this fast-paced world where there are so many confusing choices in computing and communications, you need a company that can make it all clear, simple, easy. You need a company you can trust with experience in the service you want. Wireless, local, long distance, paging, access to the internet, or customized information processing solutions. You need Alltel for you, your family, your business. Alltel, always more than you thought. Three quarters. Ten millimeter. My favorite. The all new Mazda truck. Pure truck. Now get 3.9% APR for 48 months on Mazda B Series trucks. Wake Forest has watched Florida State's Thad Busby in his final home game as the quarterback of the Seminoles have his best game. And a 62 yard drive takes less than two minutes that's the fifth drive of the game that has taken two minutes or less for that fast break attack of the Seminoles I just think about all of the time I watched uh, Busby on the sidelines just tossing that ball while Canal was leading this uh, Florida State attack just waiting his turn waiting his turn and it has paid off that Busby is now less than 30 yards away, or less than 40 yards away, excuse me, of setting a new single season passing mark here at Florida State. So he might get in one more series just to get the record. And I think a lot of this has to do with last week's scare at Missouri and Nebraska. And the top teams know now, you, you gotta put people away, leave your guns in and, until they tire out. Ben Sankey under duress all day and down he goes again this time the sack comes from number 56 Roland Seymour gets his sixth sack the backup behind Andre Wadsworth Tony Bryant he, he's the guy that made it happen Zalika didn't have a chance on him a tight end that gets a good defensive end is a mismatch he got right around him and forced the pressure Seymour, just another one in the production. They just roll them out. Hey, Doc, how about this? They have gotten nearly 23 sacks out of one position between Wadsworth and Seymour as backup. That reminds you of last year. Seventh sack of the day. Sankey on the give and go with Desmond Clark as he was 
fighting up the sidelines with Troy Saunders, and they're going to call Saunders for the penalty. They've been trying to use the size of Clark and Davis against the smaller cornerbacks, and their response is to push and grab. Yeah, holding on to him. But what Sankey's got to do is put that ball a little bit more on the outside shoulder. That way you give your big guy a better chance. See, they're defense. caught up. A 10-yard penalty and an automatic first down. The problem for Desmond Clark, Doc, with that injured right shoulder, he can't really ward off that right. cornerback, but gets the holding call to pick up the first down. This offense now for Wake Forest, you don't want to be shut out. I mean, that is the one thing you know now, well, hey, we're not going to win this game, but we don't want the goose egg. Ball comes out to the 27-yard line. Jamie Deese in motion. He has been shut out today. Sankey had his pass deflected as he tried to get it to Deese on a crossing route. And it'll be second and ten. Sam Coward, I think, might have gotten a piece of it. Perhaps Daryl Bush. Seymour in there again. Julian Pittman, who was injured earlier. It is a good week for the Seminoles who got healthy. Getting more players back. Yeah, that's great inside. Larry Smith, I think, got his hand up. Yep, number 96 rather than 95. It was Smith who got the deflection. Sophomore out of Folkston, Georgia. Wake will put all three wide receivers to one side of the field. And now Tabidi Davis will go in motion as Sankey from behind the center. Let's it fly for Davis. And Tabidi, did he make the diving catch? No. Jim Caldwell and some of the other coaches <laughs> pleading their case. Jim saying, cut us some slack. To me, he's in, I got my hands underneath yeah, that. He's smiling, though. He knows he didn't get it. But you have to fight for it. Sankey again, five-step drop. Kind of slings it out. Might have, might have been hit. That was a knuckler. Yeah, ball clearly got away. Good call. Seven eleven to play here in the third quarter. Ben Sankey has completed 10 passes today for 106 yards. He's been picked off three times and has been sacked seven times. Trying to avoid number eight, and he's he somehow there. did and gets it away. No, they blew the whistle and said he was down. Oh, boy. Ronald Cherry said he was in the grass but not going anywhere and so it is sack number eight on the day as Andre Wadsworth gets another one. Ronald Cherry stopping the clock momentarily with 644 to play I think he's having a problem with his microphone. Mike. I think he was going to explain to everybody that the play was blown dead, but I think everybody figured it out, Ron. So let's start it up again, and Trip Moore will punt it again towards Peter Warwick. Warwick at a 62-yarder called back this afternoon. This is a line drive that Warwick might have a chance to return. Trying to get by the first wave. Another penalty flag goes down as he's got running room again. Has to beat Trip Moore and does so. My goodness. Second time today that Peter Warwick is going to have a punt return go by the boards. Both times they've been 62 yarders, and both times they didn't count. Well, oh, he's scary. I, I thought Dion was about the last guy that we would see that was automatic here, but Peter Warwick. I mean, he's a real McCoy. Let's see if we can pick it up. That's a 10-yard penalty and a first down. Yeah. I think we saw it right at the bottom. But it's he, hard to tell. He makes so many cuts. I mean, if you're trying to block for this guy, you don't know where he's at. He obviously didn't go where it was designed, but he is a pure natural. Right there outside of the frame, the yeah. very first block. Hands get extended. I think we're going to see 24 cut in and try to block a little bit behind. Right there. I'm not sure if that was called. He's fun to watch. Boy, he sure is, and he's just a sophomore out of Southeast High School in Bradenton, Florida. Parade All-American in high school, and he is a dandy. Now, 
a problem getting the change line. Let's go down the field quickly to Mike Hogwood. Well, there's been a big choreographed scenario here on the sidelines. They've decided to let Thad Busby go in and run one play. Then they want him to get a big ovation and come off, and Dan Kendra is ready to come in at quarterback for Florida State. Bobby Bowden getting an explanation from the side judge as to what the problem was. Ronnie Stewart trying to get things squared away as Thad Busby take a, take a deep. goes to the sidelines. And has another first down. Another first down to Jermaine Stringer. <laughs> He's closing in on the record. Here comes Dan Kendra. And it'll be another week to set the record. But what a day in his final home game for Thad Busby. Well deserved. Nearly 400 yards on the day. Twenty seven of thirty five for three hundred and ninety one yards. Dan Kendra, the slinger, finds his man, Marvin Minnis, the freshman, brought down by Kelvin Moses. That must be wraps up his home career with a dandy. An absolute dandy, and as Doc said, it's going to be the sweat on this kid's forehead. Yeah, against a pretty good defense. Oh, I know it. I mean, it wasn't like he was going against air. He just made it look so easy. Kendra, the sophomore out of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, likes to run as much as throw the ball, and the big guy rumbling and rambling inside the Wake Forest 40. A late flag comes in on the play. Kendra's only collegiate start came a year ago against Wake Forest when Busby was hurt. 13-yard run, but the hold at the end of the play will bring it back close to what will be first down yardage. I think this was important for, for Dan to run early. Get his blood going. I mean, get into this ball game. He likes it, but I thought it was important that he take off. And right at the end of the play, Lavernius Coles with the block illegally, and it's the correct call. The fans don't like it, but you could see it in the replay. Minnis, the freshman out of Miami, being attended to on the sidelines. He caught the pass moments ago from Kendra. So it ends up being a second and one now following the penalty. Kendra will sneak it for the first down. And, you know, not the typical quarterback. Wake Forest saying they stole the ball in the pile. Jeffrey Myers comes up with it, but Ronald Cherry says no. Kendra is a 245-pound fullback who happens to throw the ball well enough to be a quarterback. And lead the team in squats. I mean, uh, second, you look at uh, Trey Thomas is second at 1,180. And that just shows you this guy is really a, quite an athlete. Very strong, fast, a black belt in karate. But he wants to be the quarterback of this football team. Did pick up the first down. He'll put it in the air on this first down play. Has a man on the far side, Peter Warwick, at the Wake Forest 40. Fans want a penalty at the end of the play on the late hit, and they're not going to get it. D'Angelo Solomon on the stop, and Brian Ray got to the pile a little late in the Seminole fans' estimation. Kendra's a lot smoother than a year ago. He was kind of high with his passes last season. Now he's been right on the mark. See, Warwick is down. Let's see the hit. Six catches for 79 yards on the day for Peter Warwick. And one of the four touchdown catches. That one, a rocket shot that went in and out of the hands of the intended target, Trey Walton. Trey a little late getting that head turned, I think. You better get it turned quick, because boy, they hit him in the head. They'd have to carry him out on a stretcher. Kendra's going to stick it in the ear hole of his helmet. Third down, Kendra on the roll. Going deep and overshoots Walton this time. And it'll be a fourth down situation. And this is the things that Kendra will have to develop with all of his strength and athleticism is touch. There's Mark Rick who has done the great job as the offensive coordinator and he's a winner 
Florida State will opt to try a long field goal here. Again, you're coaching all the way through. Janikowski's a freshman. Let's see what he can do in terms of distance. His long on the year is a 49-yarder. This is a 56-yard attempt for the freshman. He's got the leg, and he's got the distance. Oh, brother. 56-yard field goal by Sebastian Janikowski. Man, they're rolling sevens right here. They're rolling sevens. 51 to play here in the third quarter. He knew it right off the foot. 48-0 Florida State back after this local word. The new Nissan Altima GXE has more horsepower than a Camry LE. It comes with a standard CD player, unlike the Camry. And it's a whole $2,100 less than the Camry. But perhaps the best reason for buying the new Altima? It's not another Camry. The new Nissan Altima. Time Warner Cable is working for your community. Hitting the streets with cable's newest technology. Solving problems quickly, right over the phone. Or coming to your door with a free service call. Your community. It's where we work and where we live. Time Warner Cable. A nice part of life around here. It's a great serve, Dave, but practice is over, isn't it? I'm getting ready for the 5th Annual FSU CMN Tennis Pro-Am. Are you ready? Al and I are ready. We know from experience how great the Chance Children's Hospital is. Join our team of champions and help make a miracle happen. We'll see you here December 6th. This is the course for, for healthier, healthier kids. kids. Join our team of champions Saturday, December 6th at Scott Spiker Tennis Center. Call 386-6417 for registration and information. Sebastian Janikowski has set a new record here at Florida State, breaking the old mark of 54 by Derek Schmidt, set back in 87 against Miami. And this was no doubt, Doc. Straight down the pipe. He's 6'2", 215 pounds, and he got all of it. 56-yard field goal by Janikowski, his second field goal of the day. The first one was a chip shot. He had to go to the five iron for that one. <laughs> Took out the titanium driver to knock that one through the end zone. What I like about it is that the fans appreciate special teams. Let's go down to the field. There's an injury situation we need to update you on. Mike Hogwood has it. Well, actually, there are two injuries, Jack. One of them, Marvin Menace, the freshman wide receiver. He has hurt his shoulder. He's in the locker room. But even more important for the Florida State Seminoles and the future of this team is Samari Roll, number two. He has turned his ankle. They have taken him for precautionary x-rays to the locker room. Roll with two interceptions on the day and seven on the season out of the backfield. Wide open up the sidelines goes Chris McCoy. The freshman fullback who dropped a long pass earlier in the game gets some redemption there. That will help help Chris in the offseason get over that, that earlier drop. This has been their bread and butter pass play. A little swing pass. He got a personal escort, Dees out in the flat, and it has worked for him all to the right side. 27-yard gain on the play before Sean McCorkle ran him out of bounds. Sankey. Steps up, has time, has Morgan Kane wide open. Kane is knocked out of bounds by McCorkle, but all the way down at the Florida State 25-yard line, a 28-yard pickup. Do you remember being shut out in college? One game. One game. It's a, it's a terrible. 
And this is what these players are playing for right now. This is serious business that they want to get on the board. They do not want to be shut out. And by contrast, that's all Florida State is looking for right now is to get the, the goose egg. Lots of substituting going on in that Florida State defense. Sankey, a little swing pass. Desmond Clark, Desmond Clark, touchdown! Desmond Clark, the junior from Lakeland, Florida, scores the touchdown, and Wake Forest is on the board. His fifth touchdown reception of the season. Three straight completions by Ben Sankey and the Deacons get on the board. And I think one that he'll remember or cherish simply because he's playing hurt. He has a dislocated shoulder. He's been able to gut it out. And again, playing for pride and also to erase that zero on the scoreboard. Twelfth touchdown in his Wake Forest career, and he's got another season to go in Winston-Salem. Four catches on the day, which sets a new Wake Forest single season mark. Desmond, this is his 70th catch of the year. Well, the two plays that have worked, of course, the swing pass to the back in the backfield and the full screen to the wide receiver. They've come underneath. Uh, Tabidi Davis has run it, and Clark here runs it to perfection and gets a score. Boy, with all the moving, Doc, he, he, he went north-south, though, too. Yeah, he did. He squared those shoulders up. You don't mess around against the Seminoles because somebody will come after you. When those defensive linemen that were on the pass rush will turn back around and try to snatch you. And when he can get it moving at 235 pounds, he is a very difficult man to bring down for a smaller defensive back. I'm impressed with the way he's played, the way he's run routes all season long. This Wake Forest story has been a bit compelling. It really has been because that man has done, uh, Jim Caldwell and his staff, I think have done a remarkable job their goal was to have a winning season. And there's Mickey, who he has an attitude, and that's why I love him. Because here he is now up by a zillion to none, but yet he's trying to correct. He's coaching. He's trying to get a, get perfection because he realizes that next week against those Gators and down the road, he'll need it all to win it all. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast a copyright presentation. Any use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Wake goes 80 yards in three plays. All passes, all completed. And Clark with the touchdown. Matthew Burdick with a high short kickoff. Fielded by Davey Ford, and he ends up going sideways and got it out just to the 27-yard line. It's only an eight-yard return. Another opportunity for Dan Kendra at quarterback. I know Mark Rick says that he would like to get Chris Wenke sometime, the 24-year-old, 25-year-old freshman, an interesting story. Terrence Suber hobbling off a little bit after being involved in the play. If Wenke gets an opportunity, we'll amplify on that story. It'll be quite a battle in the spring practice time for Florida State with Kendra and Wenke next spring. Marcus Outson, another quarterback in that battle for the shot to replace Thad Busby. Davey Ford will go nowhere on first down. Jeffrey Myers on the hit. Last week against the Tar Heels, it was interesting to see Florida State let the air out of the ball. When they had to run it, I mean, they, they, they really established a ground attack. And I, a lot of people question whether or not they can. And they've shown on a couple of occasions that they can do it. There's Chris Wenke. One of the top high school quarterbacks in the country out of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area who decided to play baseball after nearly coming to Florida State. Spent five years in the Blue Jays organization and then said, I think I'll go back to school. Kendra with the completion to Warwick. Warwick breaks a tackle and takes it out to the 40 for a first down. David Zadell on the hit, but the exciting Peter Warwick gets another Seminole first down. This young man, I think it will be as good as he wants to be if he stays healthy. Is one of those guys that you'll talk about down the road with the Heisman because of what he does after the catch. I just think he's one of the most electric, electrifying receivers in America. And he does this on a consistent basis. This is his game. He's averaging about 15 yards a catch today, and I don't think he's caught a pass more than five yards beyond the line of scrimmage. You throw in his returns. Kendra out of the backfield to Davey Ford. 
Ford not able to get away from Jeffrey Myers. The redshirt junior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Got about seven on the play. It'll be second and short. We watched Warwick last year, and you could just tell that this kid was special, that he had a little something about him that separated him from the pack. Lots of substitutions. Davey Ford, another one of those freshman running backs. He's out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Cardinal Newman High School. Blazing speed, yeah. better than under 4-4. Kendra with the deep drop. Downfield for Warwick and threw it behind him. Myers on the coverage. It'll be third down. Elsewhere, NC State still maintaining that 11-point advantage into the third quarter. They led 21 to 10 at halftime, and Georgia Tech trying to cement their shot at a bowl with the lead. Mississippi State spotted Alabama the early advantage, but the Bulldogs now have the advantage. And there is the big story around here. South Carolina and Florida deadlocked in the third quarter in Columbia. Three of eight on third down. Kendra on the quarterback draw. First down for the Seminoles. Terrence Super on the stop. That was a planned play, I think, Doc. Yeah, it was. And this is the benefit of having Kendra in a quarterback. He gives you that element of a running back. Takes a look at it. That was all run right out of the huddle so you can watch the offensive linemen. They're fully engaged going upfield. That was all run. Down to the final minute of the third quarter. Florida State well on their way to win number 10 on the regular season. Kendra, slant route. In and out of the hands of Walton, who I think heard the pitter-patter of the feet of John Mann <laughs> yeah. and said, I don't think so. That was a nice pass. Now, in a lot of places, you would say when a guy doesn't fully extend, he has the G word that you can't yeah. say here in oh, Tallahassee. No. no, not in Tallahassee. Yeah, see, he looks down. You see a flash. As a receiver, you don't necessarily see it, but you feel it. Call it turtle arms in Tallahassee. Turtle arms you can't <laughs> call it that G word here in Tallahassee. <laughs> Running play for Davey Ford goes nowhere. Making the hit was Brian Ray, the redshirt freshman out of Wheaton, Maryland. Loss of a yard on the play. It'll be third down. Talked about if there's one thing that has happened today in the negative category for FSU, it has been third down efficiency. They won't have to run this third down play until the fourth period. And that's what's going to take place. 15 minutes yet to be played here in Tallahassee in the final home game of the season. The Seminoles have dominated Wake Forest. This isn't just a car. It's a sign of how far you've come. So if it gets damaged, who do you want on your side? At Nationwide Insurance, we guarantee that your car will be fixed just the way it should be. Because we wouldn't have it any other way. Nationwide is on your side. Data. Statistics. The stuff of instruments, gauges, and stopwatches. What if you were to buy a car strictly with your left brain? If that car was the new Mazda 626, your right brain would be handsomely rewarded. The all-new Mazda 626. Retooled. Refined. Reborn. Lease a 626 LX. $239 a month. Advance Auto Parts presents the ACC Community Service Award, recognizing the outstanding community service efforts of conference football players. Today's honoree is Senator Kevin Long from Florida State University. Kevin is an active speaker for various civic organizations in Tallahassee. He's also a spokesperson for Dick Hauser Child Development Centers and is a member of the Football Leadership Council. Advance Auto Parts is proud to salute Kevin Long and will contribute $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation in his honor. 48-7, Florida State with the advantage on the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. That's 
Brian Kuklik with a hat turned around, the junior quarterback who has a hairline fracture in the fibula down near his knee in the game against Clemson suffered the injury, but he'll be back next year. Probably, Doc, had they been able to get to a bowl game, Brian could have played. But when you look at that stat, probably good that Brian isn't playing today. Tough against these Seminoles who have knocked with about six quarterbacks out throughout the regular season. So you're fortunate you can survive the game. Kendra on third and long, going deep down the sidelines for Stringer, who got it. Made the catch. Jermaine Stringer, a 44-yard catch as he outleaped Terrence Suber down at the Wake seven-yard line. That is the difference. Now, here's a guy who was a state champion, 100 meters, 200 meters kid who can flat fly. But here he shows you that he is learning how to be a receiver because at this point, it's anybody's ball. Suber's there. He goes up. This kid locks on it, lost it, recovers it, makes the grab, holds on. That's nice. Oh, Look man. at that. Look at that. <laughs> I tell that's you what, work. that's as good a camera shot as you're going to find. That was outstanding Excellent. work, gentlemen. First and goal for the Seminoles. Kendra on the slant and threw it at the feet of Walton. I tell you what, let's get one more look at that previous catch by Jermaine Stringer. This is great camera yeah, work. This is award winning. He goes up, initially has it, then watch it on the shoulder pads. This beautiful right there. That will be a photo. I, I bet that'll be <laughs> nationwide with that ball right on the side of his helmet. Tell you what, shows the strength that the freshman has in those hands, the back end of the ball and kind of keep it from touching the turf. Kendra needed a deep completion too. That's been really his Achilles. Second and goal. Kendra to the end zone for Peter Warwick. Tight coverage from David Moore. Peter thinks maybe a little too tight. It'll be third and goal. And again, if you don't get your head snapped around properly, he throws a laser. Kendra 5 of 11 now on the day for 79 yards after Thad Busby threw for nearly 400 yards. When you watch Dan, he just seems to do everything strong. Florida State's going to take a timeout, and we will as well. The Seminoles leading big with a chance to add to their edge. Some people know us as their phone company. Others know us as their wireless service provider. Still others rely on our paging services and internet access. As a Forbes 500 company with over 80 years in the communications business, we do all of those things. But we also provide information-based solutions to customers in 45 countries with our leading edge software, management services, and technical expertise. All tell, always more than you thought. Think he's gonna show? He's not here. <laughs> and he's not gonna be here. <laughs> Honey, say something. <laughs> this is diet. <laughs> How could diet taste this good? <laughs> oh yes, dear. <laughs> Advance Auto Parts presents part number 16. Larry, our battery expert. Larry installs more AutoCraft batteries in a day than most people do in a lifetime. No matter what you drive, Larry will make sure you get the right battery for your car. 92 Accord? Yeah. Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. Next week, Chris Geldorf will lead the top 10 ranked Carolina Tar Heels against the Duke Blue Devils in our ACC Game of the Week, the 12 o'clock kickoff. Chris opened a, a tone for a tough day last year in Durham when he broke his ankle against the Duke Blue Devils. We'll have the action for you at noon. Check your local listings for the station in your area. Bobby Bowden hoping to see his offense hit the high water mark on points for the season on third and goal. Against the blitz, Kendra dumps it out to Pearsall. Hello, Pearsall. 
you know he wants to get that end zone. He would like to have sole possession of that record for tight ends, and he just can't get it. Good read by Kendra, but not enough. Yeah, it was a good read. And he put the ball in a place where, where Melba could make a play at it. Good assist by my partner as I sat here and choked momentarily to jump in there. Just don't force me to do the Heimlich, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, after a 56-yarder, another try of 21, and money. it goes through. Pure money. That ties the high water mark on the season. 51 points on the board. That little be officially a 20-yard field goal for Sebastian Janikowski. There was a battle for the kicking job at the start of the season. Janikowski came on and Doc, just what we've seen of that leg. No doubt that he belongs in that spot. Yeah, no, Bobby made the right decision. Might have been a tough one, but in the best interest of the team, I think the right man is kicking. Well, here's our Nations Bank ACC Salute to Excellence question again. Doc had to think about this for a while. The answer? Well, of course, it's one of the greats to play here at Florida State. Charlie Ward, who is currently the starting point guard for the New York Knicks. A couple of real nice assists the other night by Charlie. Well, much like his time here at Florida State, where he was patient and waited for the opportunity, doing the same thing in the NBA now. Jim Caldwell has seen his team put points on the board and at least on a couple occasions here in the second half, Doc, forced the field goal rather than another touchdown. You look for those small wins in the larger picture. He'll still go back to the offside penalties in the beginning of the game, to drop touch, touchdown early on. There are enough things he can continue to coach in the offseason. Savage at his eight. No blockers in front of him as the wall was to his left, and he'll go down just shy of the 20 yard line. Well, it was in 1993 that Charlie Ward led these Florida State Seminoles to a national championship. Some of the seniors, as we 